What's up guys, welcome to today's video. Today, I'm gonna to take you through a pull workout. So we're gonna primarily focus on the back and the biceps. Now, I am currently on a bulking or gaining phase, but nevertheless, it's a pretty damn good workout to do. So all the training principles are the same. These principles that I'm gonna go through today, you can take into your own training as well. If you haven't done already, don't forget to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. Sit back, relax, enjoy the workout. Let's go. So the first exercise that I did in today's workout was a bent over barbell row. And the reason for this is because it uses the most amount of energy for me at the start of my pull workout. Now, this current pull workout is one that I'm doing in my first month of the bulking program. So in total, my bulking program is roughly three months. I'm still in the first month. So in the first month, I'm not changing any exercises. I'm not changing the reps. So the reps are always gonna be roughly eight reps. But depending on the exercises, the only things that I'm gonna track progress with is either adding sets or adding weight or load used. So that is why compound exercises like a barbell row is very good because it's easy to add weight, you know, 2.5 kilos either side. And that way, if you can do eight reps with five kilos more a few weeks after than you did in the first time you did this workout, then you're obviously making progress. So the reason why I do the big movements first like the barbell row is because that's when I have the most energy at the start of my workout. Now, also, it is wise, whether you're a beginner or whether you're advanced, to do some sort of horizontal and vertical pushing or pulling movement in every workout you do for a push or pull workout. So, for example, pull workout would be pull up vertical and barbell bent over row would be horizontal. So that's exactly what I included and what I am gonna include in my workouts because you're working the muscles at different axes. For push, you could do a military press, which is vertical, and bench press, which is horizontal on your push days. So my current training split is a legs push pull, where I train six times a week. So legs push pull, rest, legs push pull, rest, and then we start again. And like I said, keeping the rep ranges the same for the first month through the whole program. I don't really want to be changing any exercises too much unless I really have to, whether I get injured, touch wood, or if I am getting that bored that I need to change it up a bit if I'm not seeing too much progress. Um, so, yeah, so keeping the reps the same um, for the first month, going up to 10 reps in the second month, 12 reps in the last month of the programme. So I'm staying within the hypertrophy or muscle building rep range throughout the whole time. Um, and from week to week, I'm trying to either add load or maybe sets here and there, depending on exercises, because you can't really like keep adding more load to say, um, dumbbell lat raises for eight to 10 reps, you know, so that way you might have to um, either add reps or add sets. Right, so we're on to the next exercise, which is pull-ups. Now, I don't, or I haven't been very consistent with pull-ups and that consistent with tracking lifts or calorie surplus. That's kind of why I wanted to get back on track and make this video today to also help me out. So um, hopefully in three months time, I'll look hench um, or more hench. No. Um, so pull-ups, great mass gainer. This is the vertical movement of the pull session. And again, the key things that are gonna help on a bulk isn't always changing the exercises, doing supersets, drop sets. It's basically executing every exercise correctly. So if you can take anything away from today's video and execute them like me, great. Also being in a calorie surplus, if you're bulking, is also key, enough sleep, staying hydrated. They're the main things that are gonna help you build muscle. So again, three sets of eight, keeping it the same through the whole workout. And 
this was assisted because um, I'm just not that strong on pull-ups at the minute and I didn't really want to not work the muscles as effectively as I could if it was assisted. So, you know, I'm not trying to ego lift, keeping things simple. So another thing to point out as well is, God, I look like a scarecrow, excuse me. So another thing out, things to point out as well is that any good training program, unless you're a complete beginner, shouldn't just be, well, for example, I need a bigger back, so I need to work back more. It needs to focus on the weak areas in that particular muscle group. So for me, it's my lower lats. So it's not just about working the back more, it's about working those muscles within that particular muscle group more. So for example, my back workouts mostly consist of exercises that target the lower lats. If you've got, you know, um, smaller traps and, you know, weak rear delts or rhomboids, then maybe focus on those a bit more. So work out where your weak points are and follow a program that's based on working them as well as sticking to the principle of progressive overload and tracking your lifts to make progress over time when you're in a bulking phase. So moving on with the back, we are gonna do some hyper extensions for the lower back now. So what I did here, I actually had to improvise a bit. So I put a flat bench behind my calves and basically at the front of my shins was the pad for the hamstring curl, like the lying down machine. So sometimes you just gotta improvise. And as you can see, I did a different variation of holding the plate at first. I tried holding it um, outwards and then leaning forwards. But then after that, basically crossed my arms over the plate and tried it that way. That was a bit more comfortable in the end. So I stuck with it. And remember you need to lower or lengthen and contract each muscle group. So here, as you can see on the eccentric movement on the way down, really stretching the back. And as you come up, you know, you don't have to lean all the way back because you need to keep a bit of tension on the lower back as well. Just, you know, just where it feels like there's a little bit of tension there and then stretch back down again. So the last exercise for the back, again, is targeting the lower lats. This is gonna be a dumbbell lat row. Now, the positioning for me, I prefer to have the bench on a slight incline because I feel like it seems to put a lot more strain on my wrists and I just don't feel as comfortable when the bench is flat. But that's entirely up to you. You can have it on a slight incline or flat. That's up to preference. But the key things to take into consideration when you're doing this exercise are to have some tension on the lower back again, because that way, keeping a slight arch on the lower back, that is gonna keep tension on the lats through the entire movement. Again, tr trying to, you know, maybe if you like, focus at a point in the floor, keep your chest stuck out, keep the core engaged, and keep the arm close to the side of your body as you're pulling the dumbbell up towards the lats and slowly back down, you want to stretch the lat and when you pull up, fully squeeze and contract because muscles need again need to be lengthened and shortened. That's how they tear, that's how they grow. And again, did this exercise for three sets of eight, obviously alternating eight reps on one side, eight on the other. Now, because this is a pull session, you are working a lot of the biceps even when you're doing the back exercises because again, you're pulling. Now, for me though, I am including probably more bicep volume than what someone else might do in a pull session because another weak area that I'm trying to bring up during the bulk is my arms. So a lot of focus is gonna be on my biceps and triceps in the pull and push sessions. So to start off with, in this first month or first meso cycle, I'm doing three bicep exercises at the end of my four back exercises. 
and three sets of eight is just the starting point. So that's a pretty decent volume considering I'm working the biceps a lot already beforehand during the back movements. Um, so the first exercise that we are doing is an easy bar curl. So I just like to target different areas of the biceps. So with this grip, you're targeting more of the inner biceps. And as you're doing this curl, you want to have your elbows forward slightly. So again, as you're lengthening the bar or the muscle that is keeping the tension on the bicep, don't lock the elbows completely out, squeeze and contract at the top and look in a mirror, look at the side, see if your elbows are in the correct position. That is another key point as well. Okay, so something else that I wanna point out is one of the key ways to track progress on a board or to know you are definitely making progress is looking in the mirror, weighing yourself, and when it comes to training, being able to lift more progressive overload over time, especially with the big compound lifts. So this is the third pull session of my entire program so far. The first one was at the start of last week. The second one was at the end of last week. And when this was filmed a few days ago, I'm basically trying to improve weight from the first session that I did. So the exercises are the same, sets, reps are the same. I'm just trying to in increase weight a little bit more. I was able to do a little bit more weight on the bent over barbell row. Um, I did about um, 2.5K each side, more than I did the first week. So that's already a little bit of progress. Um, that's just one example. Um, so write down the weight you use for every single exercise set in every workout you do. That way you'll be able to track progress. And if you can lift more the week after, note it down. If you can't, note it down. If you're getting weaker after a while of doing more volume, that might be time to include something called a deload, which is where you drop the weight a little bit more, maybe not do as many sets as you were doing. There's a lot more detail on deloads on YouTube, on Google, you can find it out there. Um, so yeah, so that is one of the key ways how you can make progress in your training. So the next exercise is a seated bicep curl on a slight incline. This is basically, oh, there's my grandmother just arrived for a Friday night sesh. Anyway, um, that is a good way to target different areas of the biceps. So we've already done the easy bar curl. Another exercise that I really like to do, which works the peak of the bicep, is this seated incline dumbbell curl. Again, doing it for three sets of eight. Don't block the elbows out at the end. This exercise, try and keep the elbows back a little bit more and squeeze at the top, contract, lengthen, slow it down on the eccentric. So again, it's all about key exercise execution. So the last and final exercise for biceps is a alternating dumbbell curl, one arm at a time. And I feel like this exercise gives me a really good pump because as you can see, I twist my wrist at the bottom to really lengthen the bicep really lean over to one side to squeeze it at the top. So these biceps are going to be burning and, you know, getting a lot of blood into the muscle and it really helps to pump those biceps at the end, especially after you've done some exercises first. Again, I did this exercise for three sets of eight and I actually had to go a bit heavier for the second and third set because the first set was a bit light. I felt like I could maybe get another three or four reps um, after eight. And what I'm doing at the minute is I'm using something called the RPE scale, which goes from one to 10. One, meaning you could get nine more reps after you've hit the targeted rep range you were aiming for. Now, obviously if it's eight, an RPE of eight, that means that you can get another two 
reps after you've hit your target rep range because the scale goes from one to 10. So through this entire program, the RPE that I'm trying to range from is an RPE of eight. So this weight used at first was a bit too light for that. And the second and third set, I know that I could probably have squeezed maybe one or two more reps after the eighth rep was complete. Thanks very much for watching today's video, guys. I really do hope it helps you out when it comes to your own training. Give this workout a go if you want. And don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Give the video a thumbs up and I'll see you next time.